Hey folks, thanks for hitting that play button and welcome to another episode of Weapons and Warfare. For Straight Arrow News, I'm your host, Ryan Robertson, and this week we're taking a deep dive, pun very much intended, on the future of autonomy at sea. So we're catching up on some stories we've covered in previous episodes, like the Manta 4, built by Kraken, Andrew's Dive XL, and the Boeing Orca. Plus, we'll get an up-close look at Blue Halo's Mission Specialist Defender, a cutting-edge vehicle designed to tackle the most demanding underwater tasks with both precision and control. To start this week, we're talking national defense and how those that operate in the maritime space are leaning on industry leaders to bring lethality, survivability, and affordability to the fight. For almost as long as people have been setting sail, they have understood the importance of sea power. From the ancient Greeks to the Cold War to today, time and again, pioneers of naval warfare have helped shape and reshape the world as we know it. Now, with the advent of autonomous capabilities and the emergence of artificial intelligence in the battle space, naval warfare is on the edge of another generational shift. So much so that this year's Sea Air Space event put on by the Navy League featured a panel of senior military leadership and an industry partner to talk about where things stand and where they need to go. The way the Navy has gotten after this uh, is really recognizing that AI is a bit like electricity. It's very ubiquitous. Uh, its use case can be applied across so many different domains, from war fighting uh, to our readiness piece uh, to really uh, the business of how we operate the Navy. There's so many facets where we feel like we need to weave this technology into the very uh, fabric of how we do business and how we approach war fighting. Chief of Naval Research, Rear Admiral Kurt Rotenhaus, says the branch's approach focuses on identifying problems they want AI to solve, rather than using it just to use it. What are the most important and critical warfighting gaps, readiness gaps that we want to leverage the technology as established by the CNO and the NAV plan? It's an evolution the Marine Corps' Director of Capabilities Development and Integration says has been on the agenda of General Eric Smith as well as his predecessors. And the Commandant's intent is that we are fighting at the tactical edge in that environment. And we're providing capability uh, to sense, make sense, and uh, deliver long-range fires, or provide what's needed to our joint partners and our combined partners to deliver their long-range fires. Major General Farrell Sullivan says it's the next logical step in the Corps' embrace of AI and autonomous projects like their autonomous, low-profile vessel nicknamed the Narco Boat, something we reported on in the early days of weapons and warfare. The ALPV is used to get critical supplies to forward-deployed Marines. Now we're moving towards sensors that we are employing at sea, not, not to compete with the Navy, but to fill in where the Navy may not be. Um, and, and I don't mean that as a shot across your bow in any way, shape, or form. I mean it completely as a, a teammate and partner. Um, but that's, that's a business that the Marine Corps has not been in in the past. The addition of autonomous vehicles piloted by AI is a development that both branches are leaning on their industry partners to find the right blend of Marines, sailors, and technology. Helping drive the push towards the new era of defense is former Navy SEAL and friend of the show, Brandon Sink. Certainly defense technology was not a word that I ever heard uh, in 2015. It's great to you know, see where we are today and the role that defense tech companies are playing, um, helping uh, great customers like our Coast Guard, our Marine Corps, and our Navy uh, solve some of their most challenging problems. The co-founder and president of Shield AI has a long and proven track record of developing AI systems like Hivemind, the AI pilot that autonomously flew then-Secretary of the Air Force Frank Kindle in an F-16. Singh's company also built AI-piloted platforms that were used in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and most recently in Israel to help free hostages held in Gaza. He says it's just the first step in bringing more mass to the fight. I want to put a million AI pilots into the customer's hands in the next 10 years. When I look at 2045, I think that becomes 100 million AI pilots. And so that means 
it's a complete fundamental transformation of how a military thinks about their military, how a military thinks about their force structure. When you are no longer limited by the number of personnel that you have in your military, what kind of power can you project? What kind of adversaries can you deter? That is why AI and autonomy is the most transformational capability of our time. Something the panel emphasized was the employment of AI systems doesn't necessarily mean the purchase of hardware. Case in point, the US Coast Guard. They've partnered with Shield AI to utilize their VBAT platform as part of a contractor-owned, contractor-operated service. This means Shield AI retains ownership and operation of the VBATs while providing the Coast Guard with intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance services. I want to buy a capability. I don't necessarily want to buy a product. Like, I don't... If I think about I need C2 data on the water, I don't necessarily need to own the vehicle that is delivering that. Yes, sometimes we will have to own the vehicle because of some unique constraint, but if I'm looking to get sensor data, if you can put a sensor in a place where I need data from it, I am probably happier to buy that data from you than I am to buy the platform that you're using to deliver it. Evidence of the DOD's investment in AI is not hard to find. A report by Executive Gov shows the allocation of $1.1 billion in fiscal year 2023, $1.8 billion in 2024, and proposes the same for 2025. And I know some of you are thinking this all sounds sort of like the beginning of Terminator's Skynet, but that's a notion General Sullivan says doesn't quite match reality. Now, there may be a day that comes where we do go fully autonomous and uh, there's less human in the loop, but that's not where we are today, and, um, and that's not what we intend to do.